Hello friends, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the gas station. This is Tuesday, the 12th of December. Tonight, I'm going to do a story time video. I have not done one for a long time. Believe it or not, I've had people ask because some people actually like my story time videos. So I'm going to do one about the short time I lived in Chicago. So, I have two really good ones. I'll do one now, and I'll save one and do it later. Because uh, Chicago, mm, what a town. I was there in the mid-80s. Now, any of you folks that were living in Houston in 1984 will remember when shit hit the fan. And we all lost our jobs. It was, it was crazy what happened. And uh, wound up moving to Chicago. I worked for an envelope manufacturer in Houston. I took a job with an envelope house there in Chicago. And uh, I'd never been to Chicago as far as living. Gail was from Chicago. She lived and grew up in Blue Island, uh, South Chicago. And so that's why we went there, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. And they were hiring. So we moved into an apartment in Arlington Heights. And I worked close to downtown. I don't remember all the details. But I'm telling you, in the mid-80s, I don't know how it is now, 40 years later, but back then, Chicago was a very segregated town. And by segregated, I mean the neighborhoods were, this neighborhood was Italian, this neighborhood was German, this neighborhood was Puerto Ricans, this neighborhood was Cubans, this neighborhood was blacks, you know. Just, that's the way it was. And you didn't mix in the neighborhoods after dark. I worked in a very uh, Puerto Rican neighborhood. Now, it took me about an hour to get home. I live 15 miles, but you, <laughs> Chicago, it took an hour to get home or get to work. And I didn't know anything about Chicago. I mean, I knew how to get home. I knew how to get to work. That's about what I knew. So, uh, I was going home one night. I'd left work. It was dark. It was raining. I'm in unfamiliar territory, so I'm driving with caution. I mean, I'm not driving crazy. And I, I come up on this intersection. On the other side of the intersection, all these buses were parked along the road, uh, Chicago Transit Authority. So I figured that was some kind of a bus station type thing. You know, I don't know. I'm just cruising along. Lights green. I just go right on through it. Well, somebody jumped out from between two of the buses to run across the street. What was I supposed to do? Now, mind you, I had a 1979 Pontiac Grand Prix at the time. And if you're familiar with those, you know, they had the pointed hoods. They came across and then went out to a point like that. Well... I reacted to the person running across the street. I knew I could not stop before I hit him. So what I did, I got the car turned sideways. So I hit him with the fender of the car instead of the pointed grill. Um, and he, it was weird because I'm sitting there. As I'm sliding to come to a stop, He's sliding across the hood and drops down on the other side, looking at me as he's sliding across the hood. That was weird. So, I stop, I get out. He was alive. It didn't kill him. Um, and I had a couple of quarters. Right? I mean, people saw it. I mean, there was all kinds of people there. And... Uh, I called Gail. Well, I called the police. 
and told them where I was, they sent an ambulance, and I didn't have enough money to call the police. There were no cell phones and stuff back then. So, uh, I called the police. Then I called Gail. And I told Gail I had, uh, you know, I hit somebody and I'd be home whenever I could get home. Because I didn't have any more money. <laughs> so, I couldn't make another phone call. But, so I'm sitting there, I'm waiting on the cops. You know, crowds starting to gather around. You know, that guy's sitting up. You know, in the streets, though, he couldn't get up. But he was sitting up in the street. Uh, in the rain. So here comes the cops. And the ambulance beat the cops there. The ambulance was working on the guy when the cops showed up. And he told the cops, said, yep, I ran out from between these buses. The driver had a green light. You know, it, it's my fault. So I felt better about that. Because I knew I had done everything I could. Well, the cop puts me in the back of the patrol car while they're taking this guy by ambulance to the hospital. Turns out he was a 64-year-old bus driver for the Chicago Transit Authority. And, and he wound up with a broken collarbone, a broken uh, clavicle or whatever, a couple ribs, hip was fractured. You know, but remember, he admitted to everything. He told him exactly what was happening. So I'm sitting in the back of the patrol car. The cops up in the front. He's going through these books. There was absolutely nothing he could charge me with. He looked. Trust me, he looked. I was there for a half hour sitting in that car. And finally, he came back and said. Let's go inspect your car for any damages. I said, well, I'm not worried about that. I mean, my car wasn't damaged really. I pulled it over and parked it. And he said, let me tell you something. Tomorrow morning, this guy's going to sue you. You need to have something to counter with. So let's go investigate your car. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. Well, it turns out the guy had this like safety pin, 30 years safe driver or whatever. And as he was sliding across the hood, it scratched the hood of the car. And the cop made a report on that. You know? <laughs> I'm like, okay. He told me to go on home. I went on home. So, the next day I go to work. Now, the guy that owned the company that I'd gone to work for was an ex-lawyer. Why he got disbarred, I don't know. I... I was afraid to ask him, but he used to be a lawyer. He said, let me tell you something. You are going to be charged with reckless operation. And I said, how can I be charged with reckless operation? No, I take that back. That was another case. <laughs> we'll talk about that one one day. Uh, he said, you're going to get charged with Failure to maintain control of a motor vehicle. And I said, how is that possible that I'm going to be charged with something? He said, you hit a pedestrian. End of story. You know, that is failure to maintain control of your motor vehicle. Forget about the circumstances. I'm like, well, okay. You know, Gail's like, all oh, in a tizzy. And, uh. I mean, I had insurance, so it, it, it wasn't, you know, that bad. <laughs> so sure enough, over the next couple of days, I get notice from his personal attorney. They're suing me. Uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield, his insurance company, is suing me. And Chicago Transit Authority is suing me on behalf of workers' comp. So now I've got three lawsuits pending against me from hitting this guy. So I called him. 
And I said, let me tell you something, pal. I don't know why you think you need to sue me or how you think you can sue me. But let me tell you something. I saved your life. I got my, I reacted fast enough to get my car turned sideways. And I hit you with the side of my car. Next time I will hit you dead on. You know, and then, we'll, then you can sue me. I was pissed, man. That really made me mad. So, I'm facing all these lawsuits. I got a customer I'm waiting to come in, so I'm going to get interrupted. Uh, so, I'm, 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 I'm facing all these lawsuits. Then they start calling, wanting to do deposition. Now, mind you, I don't have a police report yet. He doesn't have a police report yet. It takes a week to get a copy of a police report. But they're all suing me. So... They're wanting me to do these depositions on the phone. And my boss, who's a lawyer, said, you have to do it. You know, if they call, tell them what happened, and be done with it. So I sat through a 45-minute phone call with uh, his insurance company, Blue Cross Blue Shield, or State Farm, somebody. I don't remember. All right, I'm back. So anyway... I got to sit through these depositions. First one was Blue Cross Blue Shield, his insurance company called. Needed to take the whole story, my side of everything that happened. And I tell them everything that happened exactly as it happened. And uh, the next day, the lawyer for the Chicago Transit Authority calls. That was about an hour. Of going through all that crap. Then that afternoon, his personal lawyer called me, and uh, I had to do the whole thing with him. And I said, "Let me ask you something, because I've had to do all this stuff now in the first two days of this accident happening. Has anybody got a copy of the police report?" He said, well, no, we haven't been served that yet. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to do this with you. This was his personal attorney, right? I said, when you get the re police report and you read that police report, then call me and let me know if I still have to do a deposition. Because... I was charged with nothing. They could find nothing to charge me with. And your client admitted guilt and admitted to running out in front of my car at night in the rain against the green light. So, and that's how the police report is going to read. So when you get a copy of that in your hands, if you still feel you need to sue me and need a deposition, then call me and we'll see what happens. Right? I never got another phone call. Never heard another word about it from anybody. I mean, it's like, it's just so sue happy. You know, and, and you're going to lay there on the ground, tell them, yes, I ran out from between the cars. I ran against the green light. I ran, you know, it was raining. This guy can't see it. You know, you can't see anything at night in the rain, you know. Uh, in Cicero. So, you know, why did he feel he needed to sue me after he told the cops all that and the cops could not charge me with anything? You know, they were trying to work up a uh, failure to maintain control. But the way I explained it to the cop and the cop understood it and said, you know, he thought it was pretty good. That I managed to maintain control. I managed to get the car turned sideways so I wouldn't kill the old guy. But yeah, you get sued for the, that kind of crap. Now, nothing ever happened. You know, the only thing that did, that this incident plus another incident that I'll get into in another video made me decide I did not need to live in Chicago. It just... Chicago was a spooky town. You know, driving to work, I had to keep my windows up and the doors locked. Because I'm telling you, hookers come out from between buildings while you're stopped at a red light waiting to go to work, trying to get in your car. 
you know, pimps are coming up trying to, you know, intimidate you and make you go see one of his girls. And they reach into cars and pull purses out and pull watches off. This was 40 years ago that was going on. So, I didn't stay there very long before I said, you know, I'm sorry, I can't make it in Chicago. This ain't my kind of town. And uh, we moved to Cincinnati. Anyway, that's my story time for you. Hope you enjoyed that. It was kind of anticlimactic since I didn't actually have to go to court over thing, over uh, anything. But yeah, I was talking to a guy about that the other day. I thought, you know what? I haven't. I don't think I mentioned that on my YouTube channel. I think that'll be a good little story time video. Gail, <laughs> that night, the night that it happened, she freaked out because, you know, I called her and said, yeah, I hit somebody. I don't know what's going to happen. She had to sit there. I was there probably 45 minutes after the incident. And then I had another still 40 minute, 45 minute drive home. So she's sitting there this whole time, you know, not, she didn't, never heard anything until I showed up. Uh, and we only had Nick at the time. We didn't have Alex yet. So, it was, that was a trip, man. But yeah, that turned me off to Chicago. Anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed that. I enjoyed telling it. As I think of more things that happened that I can put a comedic spin on and laugh about it and, you know, sit back and realize, okay, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was at the time. Most everything in my life that was traumatic at the moment turned out to be just fine. So, I'll, uh, so I'm going to get off of here now and think of something else to do while I'm waiting to close here at the gas station. Hope you all have a wonderful evening. Appreciate you watching. I'm out.